love, buddy. Again, of course, I'm wearing my fat shirt because I wore this back when I was fat. And I'm also uh, watching Full Metal Alchemist again for like the first time since sixth grade. I'm I'm an adult now. I'm 19. And I haven't watched it since I was in sixth grade. I'm watching it with my mom. So that's the thing. Anyway, welcome back to the Star Wars Expanded Universe. Now read out by Disney or current Lucasfilm. Whatever you want to call it. Legends. So today for you, I've got another um, interesting and big story in the expanding universe, though it's very divisive. Uh, today we have Dark Empire, which is basically the better version of Rise of Skywalker, because Palpatine is back. Here is basically my spoiler-free synopsis. So Palpatine is back. He is, in fact, using clones, um, which um, people like to say, oh, this, this, this ruins, this ruins episode six is ending with, with, because Anakin's supposed to be the chosen one, and, 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 and so if he comes back, it, it, it's, it's useless, but no, I don't think so, um, but also, Rise of Skywalker completely trashes, um, Anakin saving the day, uh, fulfilling the prophecy and has Leia be the one instead. There's not Leia, uh, Rey. Rey is the one. She was always the one to truly defeat Sidious, not Anakin. But in Dark Empire, it's not the same thing. Because the whole thing with Anakin, Darth Vader, but Anakin in that moment, destroying the Emperor, throwing him over, and sacrificing himself is that ever since the prequels, since episode one, the force has been out of balance. The dark side is growing stronger. It's a tug of war, except that the dark side's winning and the light side's going progressively down, 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 down till it's buried in the dirt. And now we have the dark side being the overruling factor of the universe. All right? And it stays like that. It stays like that. Until episode four, when Luke gets involved. Now it's, they're rising from the ashes, but the dark side's still in control. And it isn't until Luke, you know, gets to his father, reminds him of who he once was, of who he can be again, that Anakin, not Darth Vader, comes out and fulfills the prophecy by killing the Emperor. Killing the Emperor itself is is not the big thing that big moment of taking out the emperor is the moment that the force became in balance again now either side has a chance at rising back but now the dark side isn't the overwhelming powerhouse that it is now they're on an even playing field that was the whole idea so anakin did bring balance back to the force though i'd say it wouldn't stay that way without Luke, because I think in the future, you know, they do a mixture of dark side, light side, gray Jedi, although I don't think that's ever an actual term, I think that's something that fans come up with, but that's the balance that, to, or in order to maintain the balance you need, otherwise you're going to fall into two categories, you're going to have the empire that we had in the original trilogy, which was just soaked in dark side, or you have the old republic, which is soaked in light side, but because they're so soaked in the light side, and so dogmatic about the light side of the force that when Anakin needs help when he needs people to talk to him when he has feelings that he doesn't know how to control because all they've told him to do is oh put it away hide it uh just just bury it because you're not allowed to have feelings you're not allowed to to fall in love you're not allowed to do this you're not allowed to do that but not actually help him cope with it they're just telling him to put it away to, to let go that wasn't the way to go about it because that just let Anakin further and further away so too much light side, too much dark side is both super bad. And so there needs to be a balance. So in conclusion with this long rant, I do not think that this entire story ruins the significance of episode six ending. I think it still works. I think Anakin brought balance by making it on an even playing field. And then yes, the Emperor is one of the greatest villains in all of 
fiction. And of course he's going to have a backup plan for something like that. He's the freaking emperor. Of course. And they already established in the Thrawn trilogy that he had hidden places like Wayland with cloning facilities. So who's to say that's the only one? It completely makes sense that, that there would be more than one of those. So, in conclusion, if you think that this book ruins the significance of episode 6, or this comic book, I think you're wrong. But anyway, so, Luke, is he going to defeat the Emperor? He kneels to the Emperor. He joins the dark side? Or does he? I don't know, you're going to have to read it. But that's basically the synopsis. The Emperor's back he, with clones... And Luke's joins the dark side? You want to know more? Go read it. I'm going to get into spoilers now. But, um, yeah. I hope that is uh, sufficient for you. Now I'm going to get into spoilers. And if you don't want spoilers, then leave. So. My first note. Um, or sorry, no. Actually, my first note. is the, There's a big battle going on at Coruscant. So if you saw my last really, really, really short video, it was from a short story from Star Wars Adventure Journal, which if you want to know what that's about, I explained it in the last video what that is. But uh, it was just a way to fix like a continuity error, because at the beginning of this book, they're not on Coruscant. The Emperor's or the Empire's back on Coruscant and they're trying to get it back. Um, and the reason for that is because in the short story, they kind of just showed up with a big fleet and the New Republic didn't want to, to have any of the citizens be harmed, and they knew they were specifically coming after the New Republic, you know, like, members, but that they would probably harm innocents to get what they want. So they just packed up and left for a bit, so that way they could peacefully move in, and they figured they'd retake it back later. But at the beginning of this, uh, of this comic, there's a big battle going on. It's also, I don't know if this takes place, like, a year after the Thrawn trilogy, or, like, a couple months, but it's sometime after the Thrawn trilogy. Luke is rocking a black suit with a cape. And I mean, I know he had a black suit in episode six, and that's presumably what he was wearing in most of Air to the uh, in most of the Thrawn trilogy. But it's a super cool suit, and I like it. They're having a meeting, all of the New Republic, although they're kind of called the Rebellion, which I find slightly annoying in this, but they're still the New Republic. Um, and they're talking about how there's been a large fleet that has been growing and growing building its time in the center of the galaxy, or in the core of the galaxy, while the New Republic fought the warlords, like in the uh, X-Wing books, uh, and Truce of Pecora, uh, Courtship of Princess Leia, and in the Thrawn trilogy, this fleet was growing and expanding uh, secretly, and just um, basically taking advantage of the fact that the New Republic was focused on all that other stuff going on. Like, not even Thrawn knew that this fleet was being uh, organized. It was a top secret thing. So, or not top secret, but like, they didn't know about it because it was in the center of the galaxy. Uh, there are world destroyers uh, in this, which are not as powerful as the, um, the Death Star. As far as I understand it, they basically, they show up in a planet and then they like, they suck things up and then, like, destroy. Or some, it's something like that. I was kind of confused by it. But basically, they're another, like, type of, like, or a lot less powerful Death Star sort of thing. Because, first off, it can't destroy a planet. But it can go into a planet and cause massive damage. But here's, again, another thing that they kind of get rid of <laughs> that would have been really effective against the Yusong Vong. But as we're going to see as we go throughout this... Uh, what is it? The Bantam Era? I think that's what it's called, the Bantam Era. We're going to progressively see more and more and more and more of these things get taken out, which good for the New Republic until the Vong show up. So there's a part in the, in the, in the comic where Han's saying, you know, having a wife and kids, and he's saying how he has everything he's ever wanted. And it made me think about Paradise Snare, the A.C. Crispin um, Han Solo trilogy. In Paradise Snare, he, there's a part, it's when he's still young, it's earlier on, before he goes to Elysium or whatever, where he talks about, you know, how he thinks he'd be a good father and a husband. 
And I just love that all the way back then, what he wanted, he got to have with Leia. And it sucks even more because I know the future, unfortunately. I wish I didn't know because then I could, uh, I mean, I guess I, I'm already teary up about it. So maybe I'll still freaking cry about it when I read it. And for those of you who want to know about the future stuff and don't want spoilers, because maybe you've read this story, but not uh, New Jedi Order or Legacy of the Force, and you've somehow stayed out of all the spoilers, which congrats to you. Um, not everything stays a happy ending. And so, um, it's just really nice that he can have this right now. And of course, the Emperor, I mean, I said this in the spoiler free, but the Emperor is using clones for immortality. Because same as his master Darth Plagueis before him, he's trying to stay immortal. And clones is a good way to do that, because he's essentially, in the end of episode 6, there's a big blue light that pops up when he gets thrown down. And that was actually like his force essence, and it would like went into a clone. Um, so Luke kneels to Sidious, to the Emperor, to join his side, and he becomes Supreme Commander Skywalker. Next note, Sala. You guys remember Sala when I read the Hut's Gambit? Sala. Is the the uh, Af the African American woman that was dating uh, Han for a bit until he ditched her <laughs> because he did not want to get married to her? I mean, she was here first. This is the first time she showed up, probably, I believe. But since I'm reading it chronologically, this is the last time I saw her was in that trilogy. So it's cool to see her again. And Leia's pregnant again, this time with Anakin Skywalker. Luke hasn't actually fallen. He's like trying... He joined the dark side because he's trying to like understand why his father would go down that path and just to understand the dark side better. And he thinks that he'll be able to like overcome it. But of course, when he initially joins, he doesn't actually join the dark side. But as he stays there, it progressively does take hold of him. Uh, Palps gets a young body, so Luke does end up trying to destroy all the clones in this facility that they're at, but he doesn't get all of them, and so Palps enters a younger one. So now, uh, for the rest of the comic book series. By the way, this is, um, if I didn't, I didn't say it before, but this, I'm doing the entire issues of Dark Empire. Like, I'm not doing, like, an individual issue. It's all of it as a whole, so the whole Dark Empire thing. Um... So, uh, Han learns that he's going to be a father of three, and he says, a father, a father of three Jedi. Man, I guess an ordinary guy like me can do something right. I just really like that quote. And then there's another quote by Han. Han just had a lot of good quotes in this one. Out of all the women of the galaxy, I married w one as stubborn as me. I love it. Um... But yeah, that's pretty much all I wrote. As a comic book series, there's less to talk about, less to digest, because it's there's a lot more pictures, and um, there's not as much dialogue because it's a comic book. But, um, of course, they defeat the Emperor at the end of this book, but of course, this entire em uh, Dark Empire trilogy is about the Emperor, so of course he's not dead. Of course there's more cloning facilities, and we'll see him again in Dark Empire too. But overall, I don't understand the hate... Um, I think a lot of the hate comes from, uh, like, I love Lore Runner. If you don't know who Lore Runner is, you should really go check out his YouTube channel. He does these things called ruminations. They're, I, I enjoy them a lot. But I finished the Thrawn trilogy, and I watched his video on the Thrawn trilogy. And he talks about how, oh, I think that the, you know, I prefer to have the Star Wars uh, Legends continuity stop after the Thrawn duology books, because after that, it's just... and then he wouldn't like even go into it, he was just like, Ugh. I'm like, all right, uh, I haven't read it yet, but it seems really interesting to me, and infinitely better than anything Disney has done, but all right, it's your opinion, you do you, I guess, but as for me, I guess I'm going to enjoy more, 
So, not that I'm going to enjoy the, the universe more than him, but that I'm going to have more to enjoy because I'm willing to read that stuff, too. But, yeah, I think, because uh, at the time that this was made, you know, they wanted to tie it in more with the Thrawn trilogy. They were thinking about even maybe doing it before the Thrawn trilogy. But Timmy Thrawn was like, no, 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 I don't like it. It's a comic book. It's bad. And so they did it sometime after. And the only real, like, threads that tie it together is that they mention the Thrawn trilogy happening before this. But that's really it. There's no other really mention of it. Uh, well, that and the fact that there's already the twins um, and they're having a third kid. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I thought this book was really fun. Is it as good as the Thrawn trilogy? No, but how can it be? It's a comic book. A, a novel has more time to to dive into the character's thoughts. You you don't do that in a comic book too often. You have more dialogue. It's more of your imagination besides pictures. So it, you can like kind of like just like see stuff a lot more. Um... But I really enjoyed this comic book. I didn't think it was bad at all. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, I mean, I, I would take this over the sequel trilogy that we got. Um, is it perfect? <laughs> no, but it's it's not bad either. I, I think I think a lot of people like Timothy Zahn, and that's awesome. But um, they shouldn't take his opinion as their opinion, and they should they try to read it with an open mind. Um, I think that. And a lot of people didn't like that the Emperor came back. And a lot of people can't get past that. I don't see an issue with it. I enjoyed it. But that's just me. You need to make up your own opinion and check it out. And if you've already checked it out and you have a different opinion than mine, that's fine. Let me know in the comment section below. I would love to know other people's opinions and what they think about this series. Um, if any people have similar opinions to me or if they differ, let's talk about it. There's an expansive universe and an expansive amount of fans with differing opinions and stuff. A lot of people like Allegiance and Choices of One by Timothy Zahn. I thought they were extremely boring for the most part. So, you know, it's just me. I also felt like Dark Forces Rising, while good, did Dragon Parts. And I think I'm in the minority on that. Um, even for Matt Wilkins, I think I'd be. So, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. On, up next, we have Dark Empire 2. So, hope you're all excited for that. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Sharing up a ton. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for joining me.